Hey there, welcome to episode 95. I'm Russ, this is Sailing Vessel Tautog. We are at Anchor in Fort Pierce, Florida. That's on Florida's east coast, and it is a blustery day. A lot of moisture moving up from the Caribbean, the southeast winds, the trade winds. It feels, it feels like trade winds, but it's really not. It's more just sea breeze, and I expect the winds to die down in a couple hours and go to dead calm again tonight. We're having a lot of thunderstorms passing through. It's rained already twice today, and I can see it raining uh, over there by Vero Beach right now. In this episode, we'll, uh, we'll change a laptop battery. You're thinking, who cares? But it kind of leads, what happens when, when I change a laptop battery kind of leads me into thinking about lithium batteries in general and actually surveying just how many lithium batteries are on board. And we'll talk about that in a wee bit. And I exited the marina. I cast off the mooring lines finally. I got myself out here to the anchorage and it, it forces me to live being much more mindful of how much water and power I'm using. That's very helpful in that respect. And it kind of gets me back into the mode of operating the dinghy every day. And it's got me thinking about doing outboard maintenance, which I haven't done yet. So kind of it's a it's a good practice to get out of the marina and just anchor out even if it's just a few days and uh, I'm on day number four or five I think I just got out of the water I was uh, cleaning the hull and I got about probably 20 percent done visibility is awful awful and I chose to do it as slack water which was smart um, I think because during the inrushing tide or the ebbing tide the jellyfish there's, there's a lot of them and they're coming and going baby so I really wasn't too hip on getting in the water with them. Plus, it's more work trying to hold your position. So doing it in slack water, that's smart. I'll do it again tomorrow, try to get another 20% done then. But for now, let's watch the video. Let's go into a changing laptop battery. So, changing the battery in a laptop. So this is a laptop from 2015, and it's always worked pretty good. But the battery lasts about 10 seconds now, and just, it just doesn't hold a charge. So. I decided to tackle this project myself and using some guidance from my brother and also some online YouTube videos, I took a crack at it. Okay, all the screws out. Let's just take a look. It was kind of popping itself out, see? So I don't know. I assume... Oh my god, look at that battery. It's swelling like a freaking balloon. It's a lithium battery. All six of these things are lithium battery pieces. And that's supposed to be the replacement unit doesn't look that conceptually difficult. That appears to be the connector. Damn it. But this battery has got to get off the boat because lithium batteries can explode and they can catch fire. So, and there's some foreign material in there. So, let's go see what we got here. Well, the old batteries are there. Here, that's the old battery. And the new one is here. And that's my rum based drink. And that's a YouTube channel. Uh, he speaks as though he's from India. He's doing an excellent video on how to do this. I mean, it's the exact same one. But I'm curious to see what it looks like inside an exploded lithium battery. So, and I don't know. I'm going to try to figure out a post on this video. But the bottom line is, this is a good lithium battery. It's very thin, like a wafer, but some of them... Like some of them seem to swell up like this, and so the question is, what's going on? Why do some of them just seem to explode? And I, I, when I cut it, I got a spark. I didn't expect that. So the battery is not fully discharged. So in risk management space, one would be wise to have a plan for what happens if this caught in fire. So, I don't know what it is I can see. Because when I cut into it, I made this, when I made this cut mark, I saw sparks coming out. So this is not something to be trifled with. It's low voltage stuff. But still. Oh my god, I had no idea. And I can smell something very pungent almost mint, minty flavor. It looks like I'm looking at the battery. It's just layer after layer. And, oh my god, I can smell that. Oh my god. And then 
that's it. There's the copper part. And I can see the burn marks here. Burn marks all along the top. And I can smell it. This thing, I think each one of these is probably a separate cell. Each capable of making a certain amount. It's smoking. Look at it, it's smoking. It's on fire now. That thing just caught on fire just now. Flame in my hand, so that's why I wore gloves. I'm happy for that. That's why I wore gloves. Nothing was flaming. I was gonna throw the whole thing in the water, but I thought I'd get it out on the dock and hose it down. That fucking hurts my knee. Ouch. Yeah, so I want to my knife. She just got burned up a little bit. I'm gonna go pull a little water on this. God dang. <coughs> I, mean, I can smell it before it bursts into flame. Bursts into flame in my hands. So, it's still going. Not good, boys. Not good. Because as I unraveled it and unpeeled it, I could smell something funky. And then I smell smoke, and then it's a boof, big ball of flame right in my hands. That's why I was physically holding the cardboard box, <laughs> sitting in the cockpit. That was stupid. Okay. You should always know what you're getting into when you do any kind of science project, and I really had no idea. I don't know enough about how lithium batteries are constructed, or even the theory of operation, how different it is from a lead-acid battery, which I know pretty well. Yeah. Anyway. Well, it's time to get ourselves back underway and get away from the marina. It's an interesting feeling. You know, you get in marinas and you, you seek marinas because they provide security and they provide a little bit of community where other folks can help you out if you need help. And that's all good. But it's like a, uh, I don't know, it's like, a, like concrete mooring lines. Once you're in a marina and you get comfortable, it's very difficult for me anyway to just say, you know, it, you know, let's get out of here. It's much easier to tell Amanda up there, the dock master, and say, you know, put me down for another month. And just like that, you just sit here for another month, and another month of your life ticks away. And many of us do that in other aspects of our lives, and I'm actually trying hard to prevent it, so forcing myself to leave is what I call this. Worried about the water behind the boat, worried about that I'm going to go get stuck, of course, but... Um, it's uh, the harder part is kind of making the decision to really go. And when I started singling up lines this morning, that's kind of when I was committed. So right now I'm showing 4.8 feet, which is seems like it's too small, but it's actually enough. That means I've got about a foot and a half of clearance. I'm going to go to ramming speed in a minute here. And this is why it's really good to have this chart plotted mounted here. Whoever gave me that idea, that was smart. How are we doing, Skipper? Oh, I didn't run aground. So, a hand salute to Skip, you know? Skip's a very seasoned captain who's living aboard a boat over here in the marina. Really pretty good knowledge. I mean, he certainly knows this area better than I do. And he just happened to be walking by and I asked him, hey, do you mind helping me get on the way? And I'll tell you right off the top, and this is without any disrespect intended to skip, that I think I could have gone on the way just fine by myself, but it was absolutely easier. It's hard to describe how he helped so much because I, I wish I had that bit on camera, but I didn't. I didn't think of it. Now. Let's take a look around. So, I'm heading down that way. I'm going to take the green boat and the one behind it down my starboard side. And then after the one with the big white flag, I'm going to hang her right and tuck in there and anchor. That's the basic plan. And I'm the first time I go, go full speed for a second just for the engine exercise. So there's Jeff's boat, and I'm going to go beyond this little green one, and then I'm going to pull in an anchor thing. 
if I think I have space. So I, that'll probably put me right about here on the chart. And that's all I have, so I still need to make a snubber and put it on. But there's the anchor under the ball. I made that anchor ball. I found the ball. That beautiful anchor ball. I found it in Nassau, Bahamas, just floating by. So I deployed my dinghy and I went and got it and I fixed the holes in it and I put the line through it and tied like a 20 foot line to the anchor itself. Because I, I like knowing where the anchor is. So. Gray water, potable water, this USB, and my main DC buses. Of course, all the AC is shut down because I don't have short power. But damn, it feels good. Now, the question is figure out where to go next, you know, but we don't need to figure that out today. We can think about that tonight. The basic choices are um, go to a city called Stewart. That's only about 20 miles away from here. and. It would probably take me every bit of five hours to get there, just knowing how slowly I drive. And it would be torturous because it's going to be in a straight line, cannot deviate. <laughs> you know, just going from marker to marker in the ICW. And that you sounds so easy, but when you don't have an electronic helm, that means you actually have to be sitting at the wheel and staring at the compass and straining your eyes for the next marker the whole damn way. And one false move and I'm aground. So... Considering that I'm at anchor now, let's go through our options matrix. Option one being do nothing. Stay right here at anchor and just leave the boat at anchor. Yeah, I can do that. And if I was going to live aboard 24-7, that's acceptable because if there's a storm coming, I'll run into Faber Cove like I've done before and ride out the storm. Um, um, but I am going to be leaving the boat. I'm going to be going to the Philippines in a couple of weeks, and, and I really am not going to go and just leave the boat at anchor. I'm just not going to do that. Even if it would probably be okay, I'm just not going to take that chance. So, But that is an option, and that's a free option, zero cost. The second option is to run down to Stewart and pick up a mooring. Those are $500 a month, which is a lot for a mooring. But it's a really hoity-toity marina, pretty nice setup, you know, good showers and all that stuff. So it's pretty nice, and as much as further up the St. Lucie River, so it's going to be better protection than what I have here, for sure. And better than being in the marina I just left. That marina I was in, that would be death to a boat should there be a storm if I wasn't there to protect it. So option two, go to Stewart. And that's close, could be there in a day. No problem. It almost can go independent of weather, you know, because it's, I'm just going to probably, be, I would try to sail it, but um, I'm not going offshore. I'm just going to stay inside the ICW to get there. Option three would be go north up to Jacksonville. That's two and a half days of sailing to get there, saying blah, which is okay, but then you got to go up that river, which was, as I recall, about four mo hours of motoring up the river, which kind of sucked. And the marina I was in was very shallow there also. I mean, I was pushing mud to get in there. So I'm like, hmm. And then when the hurricane season's over, there I am, exactly where I was 12 months before. So that's kind of uh, got a negative thing, is I don't really want to be someplace I've been before. Running down to Marathon and spending the summer and running around the Marathon and the Keys and Dry Tortugas in southwest Florida, yeah, I can do that. But again, where do I go? What do I do with a boat when I'm away from the country? You know, that's the thing. So I just gotta think. But not today. Today is no thinking day. So I did all my thinking ready for the day. So there you have it. Almost burned my boat up because I wasn't being very bright. And got out of the marina. And really, so it hasn't been a bad wait. You know, nobody died in any of these events. and. I hear the thunder coming. I'm going to pack up the camera and get this video shipped up. Shipped out. <laughs> Shaped up and then shipped out. Alright, take care guys. Bye.